Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put up big news. And today's news is record revenues. And here to talk about it is Jason William. He's a CEO of Kiddos Inc. Trades in Canada under KIDZ, kids, great symbol. And for friends in the US, KDOZF. Guys, if you believe in the future of mobile, who doesn't believe in the future of mobile? Everything's going there gaming, social, all of it. Well, Mobile advertising has to go right with it, right? And Kiddos owns the biggest mobile advertising platform for kids and families. And how big is it? Uh, there are almost 4,000 apps around the world that are using Kiddos, reaching over 300 million kids. Uh, and they're working with top brands, Disney, McDonald's, Hasbro, Lego, you name it. And they're a trusted partner of Apple and Google because they got to be in their app stores and they got to be compliant, especially when it comes to kids. What's that translate into? Record revenues every year. 2017, just $1.9 million. But then 2018, 3 million. The next year, 4.5. The year after that, 7.1. 2021 last year, $12.5 million, up 74%. And what we're talking about today, Q2 revenue, another record, $2.5 million US. Jason, welcome back, my friend. Thank you, George. Great to be here. Hey, so record revenue a is something to really celebrate because it just you guys just We're keep excited. setting records now on the flip side 15.7 percent growth which right. for you guys is not a great growth number until True. you put in perspective and i want you to talk about this ad tech ad spend was horrendous in q2 for the entire world snap it really was you know we all got snap crushed roku got crushed and even google only grew 13 percent you grow 15.7 so how amazing is the field to pretty much outperform the entire space? For sure, for sure. I mean, we have been aggressive with our targets. We continue to be. The performance has been there. I'm not going to lie. You know, Q2, there, there were some uh, challenges, for sure. The, the environment was tricky. May, in particular, was a particularly soft month. But uh, we made up for the for whole with, world. Yeah, for the whole world. That's right. And, uh, you know, it's it's hard to look past sometimes when you're pushing for um, big targets. But, you know, we hit it nicely in both April and June. And, um, you know, the business is firing and, and what we're doing is working and the segment is hot and uh, that's going to continue. In a lot of ways, I, I almost think this is a great quarter because if the whole world's booming, OK, it's great that you're booming right along with it. But given the devastation, I mean, the horrendous devastation that happened in Q2 for companies around the world in every industry, let alone advertising, it's the first thing to go as ad budgets get slashed. I actually think this is a great look into the power and strength of kiddos because, right. you know, the hurricane hit and that's when we know who, who are the strongest. So, right. you know, what does it say about kiddos that you guys uh, outperform everybody? It's exactly what I've been saying to, to other people who, you know, in internally or externally that actually the true test of, of a company is not that you can rise with the tide. It's that actually when those headwinds turn, right how do you perform and can you stand and are you still of value for the scarce dollars that are looking yep. to buy? And, uh, and I think, you know, we've proved that in Q2 and we will definitely continue to prove it because our technology is, is in a critical part of the ecosystem and the advertisers and the people who rely on this, um, they're not going away. And, uh, and that's important for kiddos and important for everything that we're doing. Does it also say something about the, industry you're specifically in you're specifically targeting because you're targeting kids and families um does that almost show us that you're also in a great industry that i don't want to say is is recession proof uh but clearly right. it's demonstrated some power but does that also show that you guys are in the right industry i think it i mean definitely there are multiple breakdowns within the industry so like ad tech's a good place to be because um so much content needs to be supported by monetization. Mobile is a great place to be. And then within those subsets, kids as a leader is important for sure. It's the leadership position that helps you to withstand above and beyond other things. So I think, you know, you can see companies survive and perform when the tide is riding without a leadership position. But the fact that we're the leader in ad tech on mobile in kids, which is privacy and security sensitive. And we're leaders in that area. And um, we have the technology built from the ground up to support that stance. 
that is uh, a testament to us and that will you know that's backs the numbers that we do and will do in the future how a big part of it obviously is that you're you you target kids and families but that also is your bar you're part of a massive paradigm shift that's taken place like guys sure. like me over 50 and you know some younger guys there's no massive paradigm shift we, we we watch about the same amount of tv we do a little more online right but the kids the the, the kids market is making a massive shift is that shift still taking place where absolutely. And, and that, and every day you're getting new customers whether you like it or not right absolutely and it so there are several aspects to it there's the consumer shift so the amount of time that people are spending on devices which continues to increase there's the amount of kids in general that have access to devices and good devices that can pick and choose the content that they want then there's the advertising dollars that continue to shift from broadcast tv and are looking for a home and that's a that's an ongoing shift that there are billions still on broadcast that are looking for a home in digital and they are looking for performance and reach and kiddos offers those metrics and kiddos you know we're not standing still we're we're expanding more and more on mobile we're extending um you know into ctv we've got lots of interesting options ahead of us that expands what we do with the kiddos stamp of security and privacy and reach and performance and we offer that to advertisers and they buy it and they like more and for people who are watching this uh, discovering kiddos for the first time because they see record revenues um that macro paradigm shift i mean that that do, do you see that stopping before the end of this decade or is that just going to keep on no i mean all on those going? ones that i mentioned um will continue for sure uh and then there's there's even more because privacy is not set in stone either and that pendulum is swinging hard for more privacy so actually right now there is a bill in the us that is sitting with the senate i believe that is pushing the age of copa which is where we draw the line on can we track or not track uh, an individual and that line is currently the age of 13 so under 13 cannot be tracked and that is where kiddos is like super stronghold is and that age is being proposed to be raised to 16 and so basically wow. so that would bring you a massive new audience that massive new audience have to come to you have to come to us and becomes more of a concern for any company that is digitally um monetizing that age great and that's a big and powerful discretionary um kind of decision maker inside the family and so those that's a group that advertisers want to reach and so you know that'll take us past the you know the the stronghold of legos and mattels and disney's and those groups and take us more into um you know some of the great food companies and other services yeah. and etc that teens are strong on and we're performing Excellent. in those areas but once it becomes you know kiddos is the place to reach them rather than a place to reach them then that will be uh, very powerful for kiddos and by the way people should know that your main competitor was bought by epic games back in 2020 they were um for we think somewhere in the 300 million dollar range even though it's even though it's undisclosed so correct uh, it's fair to say that you kiddos probably on the radar of a lot of big a lot of big companies out there true yeah i mean um we were in conversations with with many people at, at all times about what the future will hold and you know our focus is to build our software and to grow our business and to make our importance in the ecosystem and uh you know whether or not and when we fit into their greater strategy you know time will tell but at, at some point certainly we feel that kiddos definitely has a place in one of these companies um positions and we're just going to execute and grow until that time comes i mean there's an interesting another interesting um macro event is the age gating inside mobile apps so like as of today it is a posted policy of the app stores that apps who have mixed audiences should use age gates and so as soon as you use an age gate then anyone who fails the age gate needs to use safe technology to monetize like kiddos but right now because it's optional even though it's a policy most apps do not use age gates but as soon as that policy is enforced then we're talking um you know our 4000 apps will go up to 50000 apps within you know, six six months like as soon as is that there is there any reason to believe that you know the app stores will start to enforce that like do you see any leanings towards that 
Probably, um, you know, it's certainly oh, no. a, a macro event that's on our um, big upside tick box. And, and I would not be surprised to see that happen. Um, you know, time will tell. You never really know when um, the stores are going to change a policy like that. Typically, they lead with a written policy and then enforcement comes at some point in the future. But there is a, you know, a grace period, of course, but um, that would be a massive change. And, and it would actually um strengthen the way that the regulations are supposed to be interpreted and so we feel that it's a natural evolution of the safeguarding of the app ecosystem and you know when that happens we'll be there yep yep i would and i i feel the same way so i won't add any more of that but you know i'm a digital guy and i, I see it going that way as well let's talk about the the rest of the year you guys have stuck to your guidance of between 19 and 21 million dollars in revenue which would be a 60 percent uh, increase over last year, ballpark, depending Correct. on where that ended up. Um, you know, how's that look? Give, give, are you starting to see, we went through a hurricane, the whole world sure. in Q2. Are you starting to see the clouds? Cause we see, we see markets are starting to rebound a little bit. Right. People feel a little bit better because that it, peak inflation, people are really panicking about that. Yeah. Seems to be, you know, slowing down. I mean, it's still, it's still there or it's still a right. problem, but what are you seeing in terms of, because obviously if you guys are maintaining guys, you you feel like you... Uh... Yeah, I mean, that's been our target since we started the year and we're we're sticking with that. You know, we've, we've fallen off a little bit with Q2 with the storm that hit, and but our, our numbers are still strong and we see very strong bookings for the second half, which is when Kiddos does the majority of its business yeah. and, and especially in Q4. And so we're keeping that North Star locked and that's our focus and that's our objective. And we're going to keep pushing to that until, um, you know, until we beat it. And, and if we don't, then that's what it'll be, but we're pushing as hard as we can for 60% growth. Would it be fair to say that George Com, you know, I always use this phantom company called George Com, that may be advertising the kiddos network to sell my widgets. Yep. Uh, and I didn't have a, I didn't have a great Q2 either because of what it was going on around the world. Would right. it be fair to say that, George Com is now going to increase its ad budget because it it wants to reach its own numbers for the full year 2022. So in fact, you may see whatever you kind of we definitely do see that. Yeah, no, we see demand get pent up in that way. So the people, it's not like the the dollars were removed. It's that they were they were held back and they they can spring forward like that. I actually we saw a nice increase from a big advertiser just this morning, exactly with that plan, that same thing. And scenario. I didn't know that by the way, right? I yeah. did not know that. <laughs> no, you didn't. So I'm glad we're we're yeah. thinking the same way. Yeah. And so definitely that's going to happen. And a lot of it is unknown at this point because not all the plans are done, not all the plans are in. And so it, it takes kind of the the heat of Q4 to understand exactly where we're going to land. Last year, um, you know, I thought 11.5 was, was aggressive and we finished at 12.5. And so um, you just don't really know in, in this industry where you're going to go, what you do is you build your tech and you build your opportunities as strong and as powerful and as robust as possible. And you staff it with the right people. And then um, you wait for that wave and you position and make as much on ramps and on roads as you can. And then you capture it all as you can. And that's, that's the strategy we're taking. And I'd say we're in a, we're in a very strong position right now. Yeah. And you're putting your money where your mouth is. I found this interesting, the press release as well. I mean, the whole world, everybody, even I know in the private uh, web three space, internet space is reducing headcount. Right. But in the press release, you actually said you're increasing headcount. You're so you're been. not just talking a big game, you're not saying, hey, let me say the right things for for George and the and our investors out there. You're actually increasing headcount. That's money coming to. out of your pocket. Yeah. You're not going to do that unless you feel really confident, right, Jason? No, no. We, we we are. I mean, we we know the growth is there and we know that the deals are there and we need these people good talented people to add to the kiddos team that are going to help us execute and um we actually have a later today I, i'm i'm sitting in a meeting where we're reviewing all of the outstanding opportunities and we're going to reprioritize them because there there are too many and so we're really nice. chasing a huge amount of different opportunities and that's what's super interesting about ad tech in general is just there there's a lot of different ways that you can um that you can turn this technology and these opportunities into dollars and uh and we have to prioritize those and uh, we need the right people and the right ones to make sure that they're all in line to capture the biggest opportunities for q4 
I wish I could be a fly on the wall in that meeting. <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting. I mean, it's always a <laughs> tough one because you, you don't, you want to say yes to them all, but uh, that's just the way it is. Last question for you. Uh, the real long-term picture uh, of growth for you also is, is geographical diversification. Right. Um, and you guys have been making real inroads outwards. How's the, yeah. how's your global diversification strategy looking right now? Is it, is it kind oh. of in line with your expected B? Is it ahead of where the curve? How, how, I and, think, and where do you yeah. plan to be in the next 12, 24 months? I think actually some of the regions have performed outperformed and they've helped us to really achieve the numbers that we are doing. Um, you know, Asia's in particular has done really well. Uh, we're seeing really nice pickup there. Um, we've seen Western Europe continue to, to outperform. We're seeing more from Latin America come on. Mexico, we got a lot of great things brewing in Brazil. So there, I mean, we activated deals in 58 countries um, in 2021. Wow. And um, we'll see what, I'm not sure what the count is for this year, but definitely hope to beat that. But, you know, more countries is good, but it's just, you know, what percentage growth can you get on that country? That's the key figure because there are certain ones that, that really drive, but we're focused on, on so many different countries and so many different sellers and so many different regions that um, the percentage gains are strong. And uh, when we see them lag, then, you know, we, we get on it, we find, we make changes, we bring in new people, new opportunities and uh, to get those back on track. And that's what we're doing. And I got to figure emerging markets has got to be a, a play a big role in that. You've got emerging markets that have just moving sure. up the income scale, which means they're going to have more phones, which means oh, they're going to have more commerce. And that's, that's, that's ground zero. I got to, I got yeah. to assume for it. Long term, I mean, the, the, the economics are fantastic because you can reach people with a one to one relationship for not very much money, and anyone can do it um, in any country, in any region of the world through this type of technology. And, uh, and that's very powerful. So that's what we're enabling. And we know that the, um, the utility is there and, uh, and it's got a price and we're offering it to, to thousands of advertisers and hundreds of partners. And that's the way it works. And the numbers don't lie, right? Again, no. you know, a lot of guys like to talk the talk in the small cap world, but kiddos right. is walking the walk because we are. when you're putting up record numbers, everything you say is not taken with a grain of salt. Everything you say is like EF Hutton in the old days, really listen to Jason and what he has <laughs> right. to say. But hey, no, it's, it's, it's yeah. August, it's the middle of the summer. I'm in Jacksonville, Wyoming, hence why, you know, the lighting isn't ideal, but <laughs> that's how important this news was that we had to have yeah, this. I mean, I'm even on vacation. I said, no, we got to talk about this now. So congratulations to you Thank and the you team, Jason. Much. I mean, can't wait to see the rest of the rest of the rest. Yeah, of the I'm year. excited too. It's going to be busy, but um, the kiddos team is is a wonderful group, and we're really pushing, and uh, we're going to deliver. Yeah, you always have, and I, I guess I can't wait to have the next conversation with you. But try and take a little time off with you. Labor Thank Day's you. around the corner. Thank you. Yeah, Maybe yeah, get a barbecue in or something like that, That's and great. really get ready for the last for that last run, my friend. Absolutely. Thanks, George. For everybody at home, you've been watching or you've been listening by podcast on Spotify, Google, or your favorite pa or, or Apple in your favorite podcast platform to Jason Williams. He's the CEO of Kiddos Trades in Canada, K-I-D-Z for friends in the U.S., K-D-O-Z-F. Guys, you've heard the numbers. You've heard the strategy. If you're new to Kiddos and you need to do your research for the first time because you just discovered them, real easy way to do that. First, get to the company's profile page on Agoracom because we know this is a bit of a new thing for a lot of people out there, uh, you know, mobile advertising platforms for kids and families. So we got the numbers, we got some of the strategy, we got everything there you need to know to get the good foundational information about the company. And then from there, link over the website, do your deep dive due diligence, and hopefully today you discovered your next amazing record setting small cap company. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. See you next time. Thank you. Hey guys, this video is over, but don't forget to help your company by liking it and even leaving a comment below. And then don't forget to help yourself by subscribing to our channel and never missing another great Agoracom small cap video.